Hi lovelies! Today we're going to talk about A Tale of Magic by Chris Colfer. This book was spectacular. Let me just spoil it for you already. This book was spectacular. So without any further ado, grab a snack, grab a drink, and let's talk about this. Roll the intro. book circles around a group of kids, but mostly a character known as Bristol Evergreen. She grows up in this kingdom that is very much traditional. They believe that magic is evil, magic is horrible, women are only meant to be producers of other children, if you know what I mean. Um, very oppressive society. Her dad is what's known as a justice in her kingdom, and basically they're the lawmakers, and they uphold the law, and her dad is an evil a-hole to me. Anyway, she... Also, reading is banned. Reading is banned for women in this in this nation. Reading is banned, as well as magic. Um, so she gets a job sneakily at a library, and it turns into her getting caught because she's reading banned books as well as just reading in general, because again, books are banned for women in this, in this, in this country, as well as the surrounding countries, because they're all like-minded. Ew. <laughs> so, Bristol gets caught and she gets sent to a, I think it's like a camp, or like a work camp or something. Anyway, she gets sent to this work camp, and then she gets picked up by the magical, the wonderful, the hilarious Miss Weatherberry. And Miss Weatherberry is a fairy, and she has tricked the king in the beginning of the book. She has tricked a king, the king of, I think it's Bristol's nation, because there's a whole bunch of kingdoms surrounding it, of Bristol's nation, to take two magical children and train them at her school. So that's what she does. She picks Bristol because Bristol's, she has this map, this map of magic, and Bristol is the brightest star on her map. So she goes and gets Bristol, and she takes her to her school, as well as there's other characters there. Along the way, they pick up, oh my god, I forgot his name. Sorry about that, my cat was shaking the table again, because he likes to hop up on the table and watch the birds out the window. And then he started itching, and that's what all the shaking was about. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. But she meets these other characters, including one that has a fire. Um, like, he just turns into a giant flame. It's insane. There's all these different characters, including one named Lucy, who ends up being a witch, because there's witches that are predominantly evil, and then there's fairies who are predominantly good. But everyone that's human just lumps them in together and says that they're all the same thing and that they're all witches, and that's why magic is banned. This book is so good. It's such a great book. Like, you can tell a lot of the stuff is allegories for, like, religious trauma. I mean, you can relate to this if you have religious trauma, if you're part of the LGBTQ community, because there's this moment where they're looking in this pool and Madam Weatherberry is telling them to basically bring their truth self and expose their truth self to the, to the, to the forefront. And they get like, she's looking and Bristol is looking into the thing and she can't find it. She can't find it. And she brings it out. Finally, she brings out her true form and as well as all the other kids. And she says that she's never been prouder to see her true self out in the open, and it's, like, such a good allegory for coming out and just feeling like, this is me. This is me. I'm gay. What up? Hey. And it's just, it's so good. Like, you can relate to it if you're, if, even if you're not gay or you're not part of the LGBTQ community. If you don't have religious trauma, you can feel for these characters, but you can easily see where the allegories are and where the Maybe even the inspiration of the author is in here. Chris Colfer is, 
I've grown up watching Chris Colfer on Glee. If you don't know, he played the character known as Kurt Hummel in Glee, which was one of my favorite characters of the entire show because I freaking love Chris, Colfer, Chris Colfer's voice. Blah, blah, blah. How'd that taste? How'd that stutter taste? But, <laughs> and this is my first time reading. No, actually, I've read a book of his before. Um, I forgot what it was called, but the character ends up dead. Like, you find out that he's dead. I forgot what the what the name of it was. I got it at the Dollar Tree when I was a kid. Not a kid, but like a teenager. Anyway, I'm gonna have to look it up. I don't know what the name of that book was. But it was super sad, so I don't recommend. Because it was sad. But it was good. But this back to this book. This book was so good. The world building is incredible. The characters are so relatable. The characters all have these different aspects about them and it's just, it's so good. Like, I can't get over how good this was. This was a breath of fresh air in all the DNFing I've done in the last six months. I've DNFed so many books that people are saying, you need to read this. This is popular. This is what everyone's talking about. This is the best thing for you right now. Read this, read this, read this. And a lot of the times I've ended up having to DNF things because it's one of those books that people are like, this is so amazing. Oh my God, I love this. This is so great. And like I said, you don't have to read a book simply because it's popular. I know because I fell victim to it. Like there's a lot of, quite a lot of books that I've just read because I've seen that they're popular, that this is what people are talking about. So I, of course, want to know what all the hype is. But it's like, I end up reading genres that I don't even enjoy. I end up reading things that I also feel like if I don't read it and I don't like it, I feel like, oh my gosh, there's something wrong with me. Why am I not seeing how good this is if I don't like it? But this was a breath of fresh air. This was one that was recommended to me a couple of times in comment sections. And I don't regret this. I do not regret spending the... I think 50 cents at the thrift store because I was going to buy it at Walmart for $12. But then I went to Goodwill shortly after and I saw this and I was like, ooh, thank you. <laughs> 50 cents is a lot better than paying $12, let me tell you. So will I read the next one? I think there's another one. I'm not sure if there's another one, but I'm going to read it. This was so good. I just, I, I have to give it five stars. We'll read again, probably. This reads so good. It has the same, like, feeling to me as, like, Ink Heart by Cornelia Funk, which, Funk, Funk, whatever, is one of my favorite series of all time. I will sing Ink Heart's praises until the day I perish. Ink Heart is incredible for a middle grade series, or even if you're an adult, because it's okay to still read middle grade as an adult. It's okay to take a break from, like, the Courts of Thorns and Roses, which is why I read this. <laughs> this was so good. It reads like a classic story. It reads like a classic good book to me, like Harry Potter, Inkheart, Aragon. It reads like Percy Jackson. It reads like those books that you know you won't forget. That's the only way I can describe it. I won't stop. I, I will recommend this to several people. Probably. I will recommend this. This is so, so good. So good. I just... Five stars. That's all I'm going to say. This book was so good. And look at this. Look at this. This is without the cover. This is without the cover. This is actually on the hardcover. Let me show you. I know I've shown this probably two or three times, but like... Look at this. Are you kidding? Doing the most here. Little brown press. Just doing the most with this art. Like, holy sh... Oh my god. I won't stop singing this pra the, the praises of this book. So yeah. Will I read book number two? Hell yeah. If I can find it. <laughs> Within my area. For a good price. <laughs> because I'm working on a budget here with the books. So, Yeah. That's all I got for you guys today. Also, quick note at the end here. I have a poll going on. So if you guys love my book videos, please go click that you like the book content on it. Because this poll is super important. 
I'm asking what content you guys want to see so I know what to put my focus on more because I have a lot of different interests. Five Nights at Freddy's, books, internet news and drama, crochet, Minecraft, collecting dolls. Like I have so many interests and I want to film it all, but I want to hone in on what you guys watch the most of. So if you guys really do enjoy the, these book videos and book reviews, let me know either in the comments or go click on the poll that you enjoy the book content because whatever at the end of the week most likely is going to be what you're going to be seeing more of on this channel. So please go let me know if you like this stuff. Um, that's all I got for you guys today. I love you all so much. Go read this book. I am, this is, I think this is the first time I'm actually saying it. Go read this. Go read this. It's not hard. It's middle grade. It's, this is so good. So, so good. You will not regret this. This is so cute. This was such a cute story. Amazing. Yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>